Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Earthly Nutrition. Thank you so much for joining me today to chat about how the microvore diet can reverse raw till four weight gain. By the end of this video, you should have a clear understanding of one, why raw till four leads to fat gain for many individuals. Two, what nutrients are really important for weight management. And three, how micro-optimizing your meals can allow you to lose weight with ease. So you don't have to settle for the rather unhelpful metabolic damage answer. You'll be given some basic instructions on how to take care of your body at a cellular level, which not only will accelerate weight loss, but improve overall holistic health. And then at the end, I'll give you direction to resources to further increase your knowledge and obtain tools to help you easily implement all the strategies that we'll talk about today. So first of all, let's talk about the background or the context that this topic sits within. So Ratil 4 is a diet created by YouTubers Freely the Banana Girl and Durian Rider. It provides eating advice and exercise recommendations for people following a vegan lifestyle. Unfortunately, Harley and Freely supply a lot of advice without considering nutritional holes in their plan. We live in a pretty confusing time for health information and although a lot of people try earnestly to provide helpful tips and suggestions, very few have an understanding of how the body works and how food impacts its functioning. People follow advice that promises effectiveness because those physical results are there on that person. People follow this advice expecting similar physical results because it's very promising, it's very alluring, but oftentimes it just doesn't work for them and they feel just as confused as ever. A lot of people that I get coming to my channel are kind of raw till for failures. Um, people that have jumped aboard sort of this dietary regime uh, because they were inspired by Freely, they were inspired by Doreen Ryder and um, they wanted to embody kind of a, a voice for the animals, uh, be environmentally responsible, all these really good things about veganism um, and they're trying to figure out the diet part of this equation and they've just been having a lot of trouble, they've maybe gained a lot of weight, that's a very common problem with raw till 4. Uh, maybe they're having skin issues and because of mainly refined carbohydrates and then just the diet being so rich in carbohydrates that our glycogen stores, the storage form for carbs, are becoming saturated. And the body's plan B is of course to convert the carbohydrates to fats. And this shouldn't happen under normal dietary circumstances, but Rotil 4 is setting up those unusual dietary circumstances, um, causing this fat gain. So. Uh, today's video I'll be talking about the weight gain and also some other sort of problems that raw till 4 has and that may impact your health in a negative way. I want you guys to really understand the gaps and the problems with it because, you know, I want you guys to make informed decisions, not just take my word for it, not just, you know, think that I'm hating on it for no reason and I don't, you know, hate anything about it. I just think that, you know, as far as a vegan lifestyle, I'm so happy that it's brought so many people, you know, to, to ethical, you know, living basically, and to give thought about how our, you know, our diets and how the food we eat really impacts the world around us. Um, but I see it kind of as my role in this community in order to help sort of the vegan movement, in order to help people that are choosing to live more ethically, um, to take care of their bodies because I think that is equally important. There's a lot of people that go vegan and then they stop the lifestyle because the dietary component either is inconvenient or expensive or it's causing them health issues that they didn't even have before going vegan. A lot of people are able to resolve their health issues um, going on a plant-based diet, but some people are, uh, you know, getting these health issues that they didn't even have before starting raw till 4 and now all of a sudden they're, they're feeling really unwell and they go and they ask, you know, other people in the community, they ask um, these gurus and the answer to that is simply metabolic damage. And that kind of annoys me because, you know, here are these people that are genuinely suffering with problems that they didn't have before and they want so desperately to succeed and to feel, you know, most optimal on this sort of lifestyle so they can continue it and some of them are just not feeling that way. Not even just some, but a lot of people. Like I get lots and lots and lots of messages and emails and comments from people that are experiencing the same thing. And so I wanna be a voice for those people and for anyone really that just wants to to feed themselves, to really love them themselves. And in order to do that, you have to love your cells. You have to learn about your body and learn about the best foods that 
you know, support optimal functioning. And this ties very closely with your ways. I think it's totally possible and it should be quite easy to reach your ideal body weight um, following the diet that I'll be talking about later on in the video. And it's not some, you know, big secret diet, you know, no one else has thought about before. It's simply my way of organizing this information so it's easy for you guys to follow and so that you really understand why it's important to choose the foods that I'll be talking about. So sorry, that was a long blab there. Um, I want to talk about the main points, the main reasons why raw till 4 causes fat gain. So I'm just going to read off the points quickly and then we'll go through each of them in detail. So number one, processed carbohydrates. Number two, refined carbohydrates, calorie stuffing, uh, micronutrient deficiencies, and low fat and protein. So these are the five main ones that I've come up with. So number one is processed carbohydrates. So what I mean by this is you're taking a, you know, a whole food source of carbohydrates, say a banana, and you are blending it with a bunch of water, you're dispersing all the nutrition and the fiber, and you're making it into this, this food material that passes through your body extremely quickly. And what's often said in you know, the raw till 4 videos and people following raw till 4 is that this makes it easy for digestion. And you know, yes, in many ways it does, but it doesn't make it easier for absorption. And that's what really matters. It's not what you eat, but what you absorb. So when you're getting this food material that is very high in sugar, and then often sugar is added on top of it into the blender, um, you're making uh, this whole fruit that has fiber that regulates its release into the bloodstream and allows the body to, to register what it's getting. Because the stomach is like a holding container. Um, and then there's also gastric pits, there's also um, these receptors at the bottom of these pits that register the types of molecules that are in that food. And so the time that the food spends in the stomach is really important because your body is taking a look at what is going to be coming into the small intestine. Once it gets to the small intestine, this is where most of the action happens, all the enzymes metabolizing um, the molecules, and then the microvilli, you know, absorbing it into your bloodstream, into your circulation. And so the problem with smoothies is that lots of people are, you know, consuming huge, gigantic, high sugar, dispersed fiber and high water smoothies that don't have, that don't have time to be registered by the sensors in your mouth when you chew, when you masticate, or in your stomach, because it's just, it's so quick moving that it gets to your small intestine and is absorbed and your blood sugar rises and then it crashes. And this and this is stressful for the body. You know, your body likes to have its time uh, so it can be efficient at managing the nutrients. Uh, you're kind of giving it a big workload if you're consuming a lot, like big, big smoothies and, you know, very liquidy. In the dietary protocol that I'll be talking about towards the end, I explain how you can still enjoy smoothies, but to make them in a way that you know, you get more time for your body to register and to prepare for the food that's coming. The other type of processed carbohydrate uh, that raw till 4 kind of, you know, encourages is, is dried fruit. And I don't think that dried fruit is the biggest problem with the raw till 4 diet, but it is something to consider, like, you know, you're taking, again, a whole fresh fruit with the perfect amount of vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, you know, water and fiber, and you're turning it into something that is you know, not exactly um, how it's meant to be consumed. And again, I think that dried fruit can be definitely an addition in the diet, but as far as it being a staple that you can consume a lot of in one go, it just doesn't meet those qualifications. So number two is refined carbohydrates. And so this is, you know, not whole food carbohydrates. It's something that has been taken out of its original whole food parent and turned into something very refined reacts differently in the body. So the first thing that comes to mind, because raw till 4 cuts out refined oils, I think that's a, a great move um, because refined food is not, not good for our bodies. Again, it's just not registered the same way as whole food. And so the top kind of refined food that I'm, I'm talking about is refined sugar. And it doesn't matter if it's maple sugar, or date sugar, or cane sugar, you know, all these things come from plants still doesn't mean that it's good for you, you know? Like, every time that you consume something with carbohydrates, your body has, you know, a glycemic response to it. 
your pancreas has to produce these enzymes, um, your blood vessels expand, osmotic balance shifts, electrolyte balance shifts, you know, like all these things happen and they're natural and they're good and they provide energy, but when it has to work so hard because, you know, this product, this food product, this refined sugar is, is coming in the body and there's no micronutrients, there's no vitamins and minerals to to handle the reactions. Micronutrients are like the superstars of all the reactions. You think about any reaction that requires a calorie containing molecule, you have like a bunch of micronutrients that are right there in that reaction, helping it happen, either as being cofactors or coenzymes or catalysts, you know, you name it, micronutrients have a huge role in the body. And so that's kind of the main reason, that in combination with fiber, you know, refined sugar doesn't have any micros and it doesn't have any fiber. So that's the main reason why it causes issues in the body. And again, with the processed carbohydrates and the refined carbohydrates, this is what I'm talking about as far as why our glycogen stores become saturated. Um, if you're eating carbohydrates from whole food sources, um, this, you know, has a lower potential to happen. You know, our glycogen stores are quite expansive and it's unlikely that you'll be saturating them to the point of de novo lipogenesis. But if you're doing Rontil 4, you're consuming the processed smoothies, dried fruit, you're consuming the refined carbohydrates, the refined sugar, these things have higher potential to happen. And they are happening because a lot of people are gaining fat. It's not water weight, it's not, you know, anything else. It's not metabolic damage, it's just common sense, it's science, it's, you know, biological responses. Okay, so the third point would be the calorie recommendations or the calorie stuffing. And so I do not believe in calorie restriction because it's not necessary to lose weight. Uh, I also don't believe in stuffing yourself beyond satiation. And I don't believe in counting your calories to make sure that you're above a certain goal. I entirely believe in basing your eating off of your appetite and also with conscious consideration of the amount of exercise you've done. So if you've put in, you know, you know, hard workout in the morning, then, you know, take care in providing your body with maybe a little more food than you would normally have. But don't go to the point where you're eating and you're feeling full and like you don't want to eat anymore, but you're looking at your plate and realizing, no, I have to reach 25,000 or 2,500 calories today. Otherwise, I won't be successful on this vegan diet. Like, that's just nonsense. Um, satiety is controlled by nutrient and stretch receptors in our stomach. You know, the stomach is a really important part of digestion. And um, if you are putting so much food in your stomach to the point where it's hurting and you're feeling like you don't want to eat anymore, but you're ignoring that because of something that someone told you, like that's not self-care, that's not self-loving. It's ignoring those messages that are coming from your body telling you stop. So the idea of calorie stuffing is, is really awful, it's really bad, it taxes your digestive system. If you were recovering from an eating disorder, I still don't think it's a good idea to, to be aware of, you know, the calories that you're consuming. Now, kind of the inspiration that I can see being for the calorie minimums is because a lot of people that find raw till 4 have come from um, a past of eating disorders. And you know, I still, even in that case, I still don't recommend calorie minimums. Because for people that have been really seriously calorie restricting, you know, their stomachs are smaller, their body is not really capable of handling that amount of food because of the past of restricting. Um, I would say that you still have to eat to your appetite even if you're recovering from an ED just because your appetite will increase as your body becomes more efficient at handling good, healthy, microdense food. Um, so in that case, again, I would still eat to your appetite. So, okay, the fourth sort of reason why RATIL4 is responsible for a lot of people's fat gain is micronutrient deficiency. And so, you know, if you guys watch my videos regularly, you know what micronutrients are there. The non-calorie containing molecules, uh, vitamins, minerals, other phytochemicals like antioxidants, antifungals, antibacterials, um, but mainly the vitamins and minerals, uh, the 25 essential ones that you need in order to facilitate the reactions and help to build structures in your body. Um, and so I kind of, I covered this um, when we talked about refined carbohydrates and just 
due to the fact that um, you're choosing foods that are lower in these micronutrients. They could still be whole foods, they could be white potatoes, they could be uh, brown rice, you know, it could be... what else? Dates, a lot of fruits, you know. These things are healthy, they contain nutrition, but still, if you're choosing whole plant foods that aren't supplying, you know, a lot of the micronutrients you need, you can still fall short even on a whole foods diet. So raw tofu isn't even a whole foods vegan diet um, because it contains refined food and it's, you know, a lot of things are processed within it. Um, but even if you chose the whole foods, the whole food options on raw tofu, it's still very likely that you won't be meeting those micronutrient needs. Um, I'm not saying that this is for everyone because obviously it depends on what exactly you're eating, but where's the emphasis on vegetables, you know? It's all about starches, it's all about fruit, and yes, these foods are healthy, and especially fruit is, you know, micro-dense, it has a lot more vitamins and minerals um, than a lot of other foods, but there's such a low, like there's kind of like a sweeping under the rug of how important vegetables are, in particular green leafy vegetables. You know, it's so easy to get a whole bunch of nutrition just by having a salad every day, just by having, you know, some colorful vegetables. Yet in raw till four, the emphasis is on starches and on fruit. Uh, fruit, probably because they both were previously fruitarian, they were on the 80-10-10 you know, raw, vegan sort of lifestyle, and then they switched to this because I think probably they were influenced by the starch solution, uh, John McDougall. And again, I'm not saying that potatoes and rice and quinoa and these things aren't healthy. Um, they, they do contain, you know, vitamins and minerals and should be included as part of the diet as kind of filling foods, which I talk about in the microbore diet. Where's the vegetables, you know? You know, like WTF, where's the fruit? WTV, where's the veggies? Because seriously, it's the easiest way to get in micronutrients. Yet vegetables are kind of seen like as accompaniments to the meals. You know, they're not even really existent in the first part of the day for breakfast and lunch because it's all about fruit. And then dinner, it's like, it's all about the starches and yeah, throw in some vegetables, whatever. And I really think that this is, you know, causing a lot of problems because again, you're just getting so many of these calorie containing molecules coming from from carbohydrates, and then not enough vitamins or minerals to do anything with those calories, aside from store them as glycogen, and then when that gets too full, store them as fats. So the fifth reason is um, kind of two things, but I'm going to talk about them at the same time, and this is the low fat and low protein nature of the raw for diet. And so the breakdown is about 95-5, and so 90% of the calories coming from carbs, 5 from protein, 5 from fats. Um, so I guess the idea here is, I don't even know why protein, I guess protein would be low because we don't need that much, and I mean, basing protein needs on a percentage is a really uh, unwise idea because we have different amino acids and it's not about the total amount of protein necessarily. Um, if you're not meeting those individual amino acid requirements, you're going to have problems because, again, we need these components in our diet for structures, for reactions, for just the general functioning of our bodies. Uh, so 5% of the calories coming from protein may be covering all these amino acid requirements, but I think it's pretty unlikely, um, especially if people aren't consuming beans and legumes. That's another thing that Rato 4 doesn't really promote. It's, again, all about kind of the starchy vegetables. No talk of how important legumes can be in the human diet. So that's the concern with the low protein nature. Moving on to fat now. 5% of the calories coming from fat because apparently fat automatically turns to body fat, even if it's coming from a whole food source, with again, micronutrients and fiber to regulate absorption and maximize efficiency of use. You can read in any sort of nutrition textbook, guys, um, or even online sources and stuff that will tell you that, you know, going underneath 10% of calories daily will lead you to fatty acid deficiencies. You're not getting enough fats to maintain those structural components of, of your cell membranes, um, to regulate gene expression, all these different things that fatty acids are responsible for in the body, accompanying hormones and their actions in the body. Going under 10% is really, really bad. 15% or more is going to be best. 
for women of reproductive age, 20% is the minimum. I'm not coming up with these numbers just out of my head. These are, you know, true facts. Now, fatty acid deficiency can cause a lot of problems in the body, but not only that, but we have fat soluble vitamins that in order for them to be absorbed, by the way, these are A, D, E, and K, and in the case of consuming food, we're just talking about um, A, E, and K because D is kind of like a hormone, we get it from sunlight. Um, with these vitamins, you need fat in order to package them in a way that can be absorbed into our lymphatic system. And so when we don't consume enough fat, not only do we put ourselves at risk of fatty acid deficiency, but also vitamin deficiency of those fat-soluble vitamins. The most evident um, of physical symptoms that can result from this would be to your hair, skin, and nails because fats are very important for maintaining these structures. I've talked to countless people who have come to me with skin issues that they didn't have before starting the raw till four diet. Um, you know, definitely the refined sugar has an impact on skin health as well, but there's just so many different vitamins and minerals um, and fats that are important for skin and hair health and also reproductive health in the case of women because again fats are so important in kind of reproductive hormones and controlling menstruation and your period. And the last point I want to make about um, a diet being low in fat and protein is that it's less satisfying and so protein and fat have a slowing effect on the movements of digestion. And you may be thinking, oh, well, I want fast digestion. You really don't. You want efficient digestion. And by including foods that are higher in fat and protein, again, it slows down these movements. So your body knows what to expect. And then also, you feel hungry less. And again, this is a good thing because you don't want to constantly having to be to be eating all the time. Like if you're at work and you've, you know, consumed like this giant smoothie and, you know, you're really full and uncomfortable for like half an hour and then, oh, I'm hungry again, you know, and then you have to eat more and more. And every time you do this, like, it's the same sort of metabolic reaction that has to take place in order to get your food um, into your yourself. The food isn't inside of you until it's been absorbed. You take foods like fruits, it takes a very short time for them to leave the stomach. You take the fruit and you make it into a smoothie, it takes an even shorter time, and even starches are relatively low in fat and protein and so they don't require a lot of time in that stomach. So they're going to leave the stomach quite easily. I'm talking about, you know, like, French fries are always recommended, white rice is always recommended on Rotel 4, and these foods are just, they're not satisfying, and so you're going to feel like eating, you know, very soon after you finish the meals. My tea is completely cold now, that's okay. So all that said, what is my answer, what's my solution to this problem in the vegan community is proper nutrition. Simple and easy, just getting in the nutrients that you need. Not focusing on stuffing in calories, not focusing on meeting, you know, this macronutrient ratio that is not supportive of good holistic health or weight loss. Um, and to be critical thinkers and to not, you know, accept dogma as the truth. Um, so after this has been established, after you learn how to maximize the micronutrients in your diet mainly, start eating whole plant foods that are rich in these vitamins and minerals, then we're going to start to look at um, microbiotic strategies to increase the health of your microbiome, which are the colonies, the species of bacteria that live inside, well, inside through all of your body, but in, in this regard, talking about your gut, your large intestine and how we can increase the health of these bacteria, um, cultivate the right kinds, and so that they can help you with your health beyond the capabilities of your own body. So two parts of the solution, micronutrition, microbiotics. Together, I created a dietary scheme, protocol, plan, whatever you want to call it, that actually works for vegans if they want to reach their ideal body weight, if they want to recover from an illness that's dietary related, and just be in good overall health, and I'm calling it microvorism or the microvore diet. These aren't new ideas, I'm not claiming that I invented the ideas of micronutrition or microbiotics, um, but I have organized it in a way that you can learn this information and you can implement it easily into your life. You don't have to know everything that is in my head um, for nutritional science in order to eat healthy, in order to eat you know, for your cells and take care of yourself. Having a thigh gap or you know, a flat stomach like, they're appealing, they're alluring sort of traits, and to see that in a YouTube video, to see someone promoting that 
as kind of the end result of following their diet. Um, like I understand it's, it's attractive and it makes you kind of ignore red flags and warning signs, um, maybe put on your blinders because you're so hopeful that this will work for you. You know, I've been in that place before. I completely understand. But what you have to start to learn and what needs to resonate more is the fact that food becomes us. You know, food is a way to support the deconstruction and construction of new cells in your body. You know, this happens all throughout your lifetime and it's extremely important to take care of the body that you have. The microbore diet is a logical way of eating that supports people on a vegan lifestyle. I think it is so wonderful that Rotel 4 has encouraged so many people to take up an ethical vegan lifestyle. I think that its role in this community has had astounding positive impact on bringing so many people, you know, to a place of, of you know, consciousness and reflection on the fact that their dietary choices impact the world around them. I think that, you know, bravo to Rotel 4, bravo to Harley and Freely for accomplishing that. That's an amazing feat. The thing that we all need to start to work on is learning about our bodies and learning about how, how food impacts that. Because I don't think that there should be a vegan diet. Um, I think that there's just a way of eating that supports health. And there's a way of eating that doesn't support health. And you, you want to choose the one that does support health and longevity and, you know, good mood and weight loss and all these things so that you can continue on a vegan lifestyle. I think that there should be definitely a line between diet and lifestyle. Or diet should be part of your lifestyle, uh, not the other way around. So what I'm offering to you guys with the microbore diet is answers to your problems. And, you know, like, so you don't have to be running around on a hamster wheel and never figuring out what's going on. It's just about reducing the amount of refined food in your diet, micro-optimizing it with micro-dense foods like green leafy vegetables and colorful vegetables and fruits, filling foods like legumes and uh, starchy vegetables and grains, and then, you know, and including foods that have a lot of health benefits and the fat and protein that a lot of people are missing out on, so nuts and seeds and avocado. Um, consumed in amounts that make sense, you know, not over consuming to the point you're, where your body can't make use of it and again it stores it, but having the right amount, you know, getting the right amount of, of nutrients, neither excess nor deficiency. So after you've made kind of modifications to your diet for your own body cells, you know, the microbore diet teaches you guys how to take care of the symbiotic organisms that live within you. The human body is actually not dominated by human cells. 90% uh, of our cells are bacteria and 10% are human. So that's a pretty cool fact there. So yeah, the microbore diet, I'll like I teach you how to use pre, pro, and symbiotics for um, kind of enhancing microbiome health. I really want people to leave behind dogmatic thinking and replace it with education. This will clear your confusion and actually give you peace of mind. All right, so we covered a lot here. My voice is kind of cracking. Um, so what are the next steps that you guys can take in order to obtain all the benefits we talked about following the microbore diet so you can actually thrive on a vegan lifestyle? Well, first of all, you can head on over to the Earthly Nutrition website to browse through the blueprints. They're extremely affordable, easy to understand, and quick to implement. The recommendations and instructions are super easy to understand because they're formatted into checklists and how-to pages and everything is explained and so you not only reap the benefits but you understand why it's working. This will allow you to feel confusion free, confident and connected to your body during your transformation. You can simply pop on over to see which of the blueprints will fit your unique health goals and also feel welcome to download the free microvore daily checklist to get an idea of how easy it is. You also have access to the microvore daily scoring game which makes microdense eating a fun daily practice. If this video was helpful to you, then please remember to give it a thumbs up and share it around in your social circles so that other people can have this opportunity to increase their health on a vegan lifestyle. You can scroll down to the comment section below to share your thoughts and receive and provide support to like-minded earthlings. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. I hope you have a wonderfully abundant day and we'll see each other soon. Bye. Stretched were those heartstrings through rock
cookies and pies bending across state lines. 